Splatoon, Nintendo's first multiplayer shooter game that's super bright and colorful, where characters fight wars and when they lose they're forced to go underground and if they try to leave the underground then they get sanitized which means their minds get wiped and when they lose their minds they're possessed and then they become like zombies where they attack their friends and sometimes characters die. What I just described is Splatoon's single player story mode. Interested? Good. Splatoon just dropped the DLC which I will be playing, and I'm aware that most of my viewers are not that familiar with Splatoon, so I will be explaining everything that you need to know so that we can explore the mysteries of Splatoon together. Let's get into it. Alright, here we are! Welcome, welcome everybody! This is me! We're heading towards the train station because there is something suspicious about the train station. So we're heading in. The option on the left is the current game's main city, and the option on the right was the second game's main city. For some reason, we can head there now. Oh my god, it's me! I'm not the default character! It, it's actually me with my customizations and everything. <gasps> oh, sleepy. Oh, oh. What's going on? <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, all right, cool. I'm going into this completely blind. I did watch a few trailers, but I stopped watching them when it got closer to the release date, so. Hey. Fuck. I arrived in a blank city with remnants of the previous game's main setting. I have no idea why I'm here, and I also don't know how I got here. Oh, oh, cool. Do I know who I am? Who am I? Ooh, okay. I'm gonna take a while on this. And a while I took on this, so let me explain what the previous game's plot was while we wait. There's been three games in Splatoon, and in each game, you play as a different protagonist. The first game, you play as an inkling named Agent 3. You fight against the rising Octarian army who want their turf back after being forced to move underground when losing the war against the Inklings. The second game, you play as Agent 4. Your objective is also to fight back against the Octarian army who had kidnapped one of the other agents. We also find out that during the first game, most of the Octarian army were indoctrinated into believing that Inklings were bad. But after gaining some exposure with the Asians, some Octarians became fascinated with Inkling culture and deserted the Octarian army. In the DLC, you play as Agent 8, who is one of the Octolings that wanted to leave the Octarian army and therefore leave the underground, using the underground subway system. However, Agent 8 runs into the DLC's antagonist, who tries to sanitize or possess any freedom-seeking octolings. Its intentions, vaguely put, is to sanitize the world and wipe out the world for humans to return. Agent 8, with the support of Marina and Pearl, defeats the antagonist and becomes free. In Splatoon 3 story mode, we play as a completely new agent, but it seems like in the DLC, we will be playing as Agent 8. However, we seem to no longer know who we are, nor who Pearl and Marina is. I get woken up by a drone named Pearl, who claims to know me and calls me her bestie. <gasps> we have a bestie! She says she's looking for our friend Marina, who seems to be at the top of the tower. We enter the tower, but something is off. It's completely different and enemies start spawning. Oh, it's the uglies. Pearl manifests a weapon for us, literally. We defeat the enemies, and we enter the elevator. Oh. <gasps> this is Act, one of the sanitized octolings from the previous games who made the previous game's music tracks. She also used to be an octoling soldier, just like Marina, though Pearl and Aid don't know that. I don't know her history other than that, I don't know how she got sanitized, and I don't really know her relationship with Marina, so I'm excited to find out, and so are we, Pearl and Aid. Okay, I'm getting AU vibes from this. She introduces herself as someone who knows Marina. She doesn't know how she got here, just that she woke up here. Take a quick listen to this song, by the way. This song is a remix of one of the songs from the older games, one that she made when she was a sanitized octoling.
The remix we're listening to sounds like a more positive version of the original. Then, Act gives us a basic rundown of the game mechanics. The game works like a roguelike game. For every stage you clear, you get an item that powers you up. In this game, the power ups are called color chips, and your inventory for them is called a palette. The more power chips you have, the more powerful you are, but there's a downside to this. You only have one life. And if you lose that one life, you lose everything. That includes your power chips, and that includes your progress. Which means you'll have to start from the first stage with no power chips. Are you two ready? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I am ready as a uh, Freddy. <laughs> Whoa! So, our climb up the spire begins. Every stage has an objective, and these objectives can be different depending on the stage. For this stage, we had to break the portal from which enemies spawn from. It's on the ropes! Ooh, whoa, okay, that was easy. Famous last words. Each stage has a different color chip, which will become important later on. But you know what's more important than color chips? Lore, that's right, lore. I love lore, and for every stage we clear, we get lore. This time we learn that Act knows a lot about this place because she's hacking into the elevator console. And how does she know how to do this? She learned it from the same place Marina did also known as the Octarian Soldier Army. We successfully clear the third floor and then we run into a new type of objective. This time, instead of breaking portals, we are protecting a zone from enemies. This takes after a multiplier game mode where you protect your turf zone from the opposing enemy. But this time it's in single player, so you're protecting this zone alone. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Ooh, this is interesting. This is very new. I honestly think Splatoon has one of the best single-player uh, game designs. Like, level designs. They use existing mechanics to put a twist on it to make a different type of challenge. You know what people love? People love things that are familiar, but different. And this is exactly that. Yes, Like, that's why I'm already attached to Pearl, and that's why this is probably not a great video idea, because most of my viewers are probably not familiar with Splatoon. As we cleared more floors, we got new objectives and new enemies. But Pearl and I are strong, so we're alright. You know what I love just as much as lore? I love character interactions. We got an interaction between Pearl and Act, where Act finds out that Marina and Pearl has made it big as musicians. But then we get a suspicious message from what sounds like Marina. Pearl elimination. I'm gonna say this is a red herring. They're trying to make us think that she's bad, but she's actually not. Did not like the sound of that. Let's pick up the pace. Or we're in an AU where she is bad, but that's kind of cheesy, so... Unless if they can pull it off really well, I don't really want to see that. As we progressed, the stages became more complex, with objectives becoming harder, but also getting new drops. For example, disc pieces, where if you gather enough disc pieces, you are granted immunity. But I'm too strong, so I don't need disc pieces. That was not a very obviously suspicious statement. What are you talking about, huh? Anyway, we finished the tutorial part of the game, so now we could choose which floor to go on, which meant that we could choose our objectives and our rewards. But guys, I am so amazing that I got to 10th floor with no issues. The 10th floor was the control room, which had the presence of a boss. Okay. There's a lot of stuff in here. And then I spent a solid few minutes talking about every asset I found in the room, but that I'm gonna cut out because it's really long with me rambling about theories and I don't actually get to a conclusion, but do let me know if you would like to listen to my rambles anyway. Oh, oh, okay. The frick? What? Hey, Rina, yo, can she even hear me? 
Guess not. She's all tangled up in that weird machine. Oh no, 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 no. This is not Marina. Intruders confirmed. Commence grayscaling. Sit tight. We're gonna get you out of this thing. Ready to rock it? Okay, no more theory time. It's boss fight time. Oh, oh okay. Ajitando? That's her full name? Okay. While we're at it, take a listen to this music because I have a lot to talk about that too. Oh my god, this music! Oh my god, it sounds like the Octo Troopers! This part! Okay, cash that. Now listen to this. This song gets played when you fight the Octarian army. This sound is the musical symbol of Marina formerly being in the Octarian army! This part, that's like Octoling noises. Oh my god, that was Octo! That is the Octarian army's leitmotif. You hear in everything regarding the Octarian army. When you fight them, when you fight their final boss, when you clear their stages, it, it always does the da 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 da. Also, Marina slays with these vocals. Take a listen. But you know who slayed more than Marina? Me, I slayed her. This pose, I know this pose from something. I don't, is this, I don't think this is the real Marina. Is it the real Marina? <gasps> it is? I thought it was a machine or a clone. Is that Aiden and Pearl? Our theory scaling interrupted. Introducer, intruders, intruders confirmed. Who's this fool? I am order itself. Conscious generated from the process of many. I am now fully realized. I therefore have no further. All things will be converted to memory. Whoa! Whoa! Wait, I did not expect it to get. Oh! <gasps> Now we're starting Nintendo Presents. <laughs> Wait, where's Act? Where's Act? Oh, Pearl. Oh. Splatoon 3. Oh my god. I don't know about you, but I think I will always get goosebumps watching this. Goosebumps all over, oh my god. Eight, eight, please be okay. <gasps> oh, thank goodness, Pearl Airy eats woken up. Wait, you're not a robot anymore. Hey, thank you so much for freeing me. Surprised to see me in the flesh? Marina works some magic and bam, I'm back, baby. With Marina back, we get a fuller explanation of what is going on. To put it very simply, we are not in reality. We are in VR chat. This VR world is called the Memverse, which Marina created. The only thing real about this place is your minds. Order doesn't like chaos or change, so it's trying to grayscale everyone by taking away their will and determination from their minds. This is problematic for us because whatever happens to your minds and members also happens to your minds in reality. Order's intentions is to erase everyone's will from reality. Though Marina doesn't tell us her intentions just yet, she does let us know that this is not what she intended. Our new goal is to defeat Order and bring back everyone's wills. Oh, also, by the way, Act is okay. If that creep Order hijacked your work, it's gonna be sorry it ever tried. 
We're all gonna kick that loser out together. Oh, I love them. Oh, Pearly, you say the coolest things. Well, she has shinies in her eyeballs. Huh? Oh, cool! Oh, cool! Nice. Don't worry, I got you back. Let's just show on the road. And before I could look at every single asset in the game and make random theories, I got called over by Marina. She informs us that the spire is now taller, which means that order is no longer on the 10th floor. Unfortunate, but she also tells us that she can hack into the system. These hacks come with a price, but they include perks like more lives, more armor, more damage, and more. The price for them are pearls, which can be obtained when you clear stages throughout the spire. The further you go into the spire, the more pearls you get in return. By the way, remember the pellets which we put color chips into? Turns out each pellet implies a different weapon, so with a new pellet, you also get a new weapon. These pellets also resemble person's soul, so we get Marina's soul and pellet, and therefore her weapon. Every time you clear a boss with a new pellet, you get a locker key. We have eight. No, we have three. We have three keys. These keys can unlock the locker, which contain different things, such as Marina's diary and also new pellets. Agent Forest Pellet! Agent 4 is in here! And probably Grayscale. Agent 4 is the protagonist we play as during the second game's main single player. Agent 8, the character we play as, and Agent 4 are both in the same team called Squid Beaks Platoon. I did mention this earlier, but the palettes resemble the person's soul. So we know that Agent 4's soul is trapped in here somewhere. Oh my, okay, I like, I really like this. I like that things are moving very quickly and unexpected. Like, I expected meeting Marina, but I didn't think we would meet her at the end of the tutorial. Look at these little guys. Of course, I spent the next 20 minutes looking around at every single thing I could look at and getting distracted by absolutely everything. Who do you think I am? A normal person? Ha! I'm a Splatoon fan! I apologize to all the Splatoon fans I just offended. Not everyone is crazy, okay? It's actually that's debatable is everyone who likes splatoon crazy someone somebody give me an answer please anyway my curiosity was satisfied and it was time to enter the tower i first chose my weapon and i lied i lied to you i forgot to look at marina's diary and i love looking at characters privacy stuff so we're looking at marina's diary this diary entry was written when they announced their first world tour we find out that pearl's last name is hozuki and we get confirmation from Marina that she did desert the Octarian army. Last but not least, we get a hint at Marina's intention for creating members. Kamaboko is a corporation that worked to sanitize the Octolings from the previous games. Sanitized Octolings lose their minds, and ACT was one of them. If Marina's intention is tied to helping sanitized Octolings get their minds back, it would explain why ACT is here too. Really interesting. <gasps> I wonder if Project Members helps the infected free their minds or something like that. Lore explored and weapon chosen, it was time to climb the spire. As mentioned previously, because this is a roguelike game, whenever you start the spire, you start with nothing. So we started from the first stage and worked our way up, collecting our color chips along the way. Ha 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 ha, I got this. Oh, got a nice shot with got him. E uh, me and the shark. <laughs> the ninth floor was a vending machine where you can buy power chips using the currency that you can gain only in the spire. Then it was the tenth floor. Though we won't find order here, there is a boss battle. Imagine if we meet Agent Four. I don't think we will. I don't think we will just yet. They haven't really brought her up enough. Okay. <laughs> what the heck is this sound? I'm trying to figure out what this is. Is it Salmon Run? Those look like the pans on from Salmon Run, right? Right? That's the pans from Salmon Run. 
And this sounds like a corrupted version of the Salmon Run song? Okay, it has to be Salmon Run. It's gonna be like a bass boss salmonoid. No, it was not a boss salmonoid, and this is why I don't make theory videos on Splatoon. <laughs> this is so creepy. Am I gonna be safe in here? Oh, oh no. Oh, gotcha. Am I- oh. Okay, I wanna see if- Okay, okay, I'm fine if I'm in the ink. That has ink strike. It'll shoot ink strike at us if it sees us. The way you defeat this boss is by taking out each layer's vulnerable point while still avoiding the searchlight. It'll occasionally spin out of control and do something random to hurt you, though. Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. What the heck? What the frick? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, okay, okay. <laughs> this is exciting. Oh my god, oh my god, okay, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. Look at that, we're fine. Ah, uh, here it is. We did it! Boss defeated, key acquired. Oh, that was so cool! <gasps> oh my god, that was so cool! What was it though? What was that? Why was it so creepy? What even was that? Exactly. It's definitely stronger than any gelatin we've seen. What did you pick up at the end? A locker key? I got a locker key, which means I can unlock a new palette once we leave the spire. But I'm not leaving the spire just yet, no no. I will continue to climb the spire and you might be wondering why I'm here, with a completely different weapon. Well, let me give you a recap. So I decided to play a few more levels to get more lore, but not record it because I thought the levels were getting a little redundant. And how hard can it be? And then I died. So I died a lot sooner than I thought I would, which is really unfortunate, but that's okay. Because we're gonna be clearing this spire with the brush. Ha 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 ha! <laughs> Freaking get back here. <laughs> nice. 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 Seems like my commentary is also just as redundant. Anyway, I realized I completely forgot to check Marina's diary. She basically talks about how busy she is on the world tour and that she's taking us with her. Oh, we're take we're taking Asian 8? We're taking me on the world tour? She also gives us more information on project members. She says she's in the process of extracting data from Kamaboko systems. Ah, so Order must be like a remnant of the previous game's antagonist. I successfully reached the 10th floor where I fought this mini boss. <laughs> this boss is just creepy every time. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh. And I defeated the boss with relative ease. Ha ha ha. Speed run. Grab it. The celebration doesn't last long though, as Marina informs us that enemies will start swarming us. So I'm assuming that uh, after the 10th floor is when enemies don't stop respawning, or their respawn just gets faster. And swarm they did. Oh, no, what? Wait, 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 okay, okay. If it weren't for the increased mobility of the brush, I don't know if I would have escaped a lot of these situations. Ah, uh, this is not a good spot to be in. Ooh, not good, not good, not good. Get the frick out of here, okay. Thankfully, the enemies stopped respawning after a while, and it gave me the chance to get rid of one of the portals. Oh, god, thank god we got rid of that thing. 
With less enemies spawning from different directions, it became easier to manage the crowd control. Still, it was difficult to manage with more enemies respawning more frequently. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay. I think one of the most annoying enemies here was the blobfish looking thing with the tree. It'll spawn bomb shooting fish thingies that hone on you if you don't splat it. But it was also hard to splat it because of the range on my brush being so short. Oh my gosh. There were a couple near death situations. Oh my god. But with the help of some drops, I was finally able to conquer this stage. Oh, jeez. That was definitely hard. That was very hard. Also, now that we're past the 10th floor, sometimes we'll get danger levels. If you don't clear one of these danger levels, they'll start appearing more frequently until you choose or are forced to choose a danger level. No item drops. That is hard, but... Fortunately, I chose an easy level, so it was alright. I also managed to clear the next few levels, and soon enough, I reached the 20th floor. I smell struggle and it stinks bad. I bet you two will be fine, although maybe don't go rushing in without a plan. Alright, I wonder who we're fighting. Ooh. <gasps> wait! Wait! Oh my god, wait! Th those are like... <gasps> wait! Wait, I really like that guy in the corner. They look a lot like the drones you can fight in the lobby. I always thought that they looked a little creepy. You know what this looks like? This looks like uh, when you piece together like uh, humanoid figures for like drawing. Honestly, they were not that hard to fight against because they came one by one. And it felt pretty similar to fighting the Octoling army in single player. The Octobrush is also a weapon that does a lot of damage from above, which made it really easy for me to fight them when I was on top of this middle ramp. I'm at an advantage with this weapon if, I sh if I'm like up here. Where are you? Okay. We got one Inkin. Ah. Uh. Mission safely accomplished. Yay! What I'm about to face next is going to be much harder. I chose a hard stage with a bonus. Bonus stages will give you extra rewards, but with a bonus rule that is completely optional. We're probably best there-ish. Don't use your main weapon! Uh, absolutely not. No, no. Uh, why is why is that one so big? Oh my god. Okay, get the frick out of here. Okay, okay. Um, huh? Where am I supposed to go? Ooh, right here. That's a good spot. I don't know what to do. I don't know what the- this is so hard. I'm supposed to be at an advantage here. Thankfully, I changed to a special called Booyah Bomb at a vending machine earlier. I like this special because it grants me a few moments of immunity and it also does a lot of damage. With the enemies out of the way for even just a few seconds, I was able to take out one of the portals. Okay. Whew. With one less portal to worry about, I could focus on one direction for enemies. And though fighting a lot of enemies is really difficult to manage, it can also be useful when they drop stuff like specials. I camped here for a while farming the enemies until I was able to take out the second portal. Whew, alrighty. After a lot of patience, I was finally able to take out the last portal. Ah, oh, we got it! Oh, that was difficult, and I'm down to two lives. Oh, oh. 
Soon Pearl mentions that we're almost at the top floor, which had me relieved. We are. We also talked about the world tour, and Marina and Pearl invited both me and Act to their next shows. This group is so wholesome. I move forward to the next stage, which was also a danger stage. No drone and no item drops. You mean? You mean I had to do both? What is what is what what is this? What what am I doing? Despite all the balloon pufferfish, this stage was so big that it was difficult to manage until I figured out a trick. Ooh ooh ooh! Wait, I figured this out. I figured it out. I figured it out the way. Ultimately, I was able to clear this stage with relative ease. Nice! That was so easy. Nice. As we reached the last few levels, all my stages became rigorous. But I still managed. Soon enough, I reached the top floor. Top floor, everyone. Order must be waiting for us there. I'm partly responsible for what's going on, so I'll go out there with you, Eight. Without a weapon? Forget that. Exactly. Forget it. I know, I know, but I have to. No, shut up. You're gonna get mind controlled again. You're gonna become our enemy, and you're gonna be a nonsense. Don't get in the way. Look, it's pretty much impossible to change Marina's mind once it's- a It's possible to change mine, too! Get out of here. As it, I mean, don't get out of here, but stay- stay here. Stay- stay. Alright, I can see I'm outvoted. No, you're not! It's 2v2! No big blazes for of glory, though, okay? You got it, Pearl. And so, it was time to fight the final boss, Order. Whoa. What? This looks like DJ Octavio's, like, room. He, okay, I'm not gonna lie, Order is a little bit cute. Look at him. Look at him. He looks like Giratina with the oh whoa face. All right, ready? I'm not ready. I don't think I'm ready. Yo, look, it's Order. Order's cute. A perfect world is a stable world. It has no need for change, for variation. Order talks about how Order is great. Marina disagrees. Due to Marina being Order's creator, this disagreement causes an error in Order. In other words, boss fight time. An inconceivable mentality error has occurred. Me too, buddy. I feel that way. The sentence for interruption of or I don't know what it said. Oh, 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 jeez. This does not look like something I should be facing on the third youth floor. Oh, oh. Ew. <laughs> Oh my god, this is creepy. The way you fight Order is pretty similar to Marina's previous boss fight battle, where you have to break these things individually in order to break Order's barrier. Oh my god, I'm so fast! Thanks to all the color chips I collected along the way throughout the spire, I was able to move at really quick speeds. I'm so fast. Soon enough, I was able to break Order's first barrier. What the heck? What the heck? What the heck? Okay, I'm alright, I'm alright. After doing some damage to order, it put up its next defenses. I was able to break order's next set of defenses, and it was time to damage order itself again. Honestly, this fight hasn't been that hard because it's really just damaging everything just little by little while avoiding a lot of little other things. But also, I can see how this can become quickly overwhelming if I didn't have the mobility of my brush. 
And then I was able to defeat it. Or did I? We're so close. Oh, we did it! We did it! Looks like you're done, Zo Snorter! Such chaotic strength is fearsome, but the program is now fully executed. The rebooted world will now tranquil with order. Huh? Huh? No, after all that, we were too late? Uh, I don't want a blank world. Maybe I can shut down Order's program. No good. It's propagating too fast. Pearl! I... This is so cool. I'm actually pushing to the beat. This is me pushing. Yeah, see, look at that. It's me pushing. I'm so good at this rhythm game. Pearl! There it is, eight. I'm feeling your vibe. And Marina, your backing track slaps. Cancel that snooze button. Hit me with that beat, DJ. Coming at you, Pearl. <gasps> oh my god, Act is also. <gasps> Act! Oh my god. <laughs> Of what use is this a resistance? Happiness is stasis, unchanging forever. Are you kidding? We're still on tour! <laughs> the show don't stop! Keep your boring gigs for boring people, we're out here living! Right gang, crank it up! Mic check? Booyah! I love you, Pearl! <gasps> My limbs are self-animating. Why? <laughs> is that why my perimeters and undefined her is occurring? Ha! This world you dreamed of is so boring, even you can't stand it anymore. Oh! But we got ink to fix that. Don't get cooked! Stay off the hook! Oh, uh, I love them. Useless. Try all you like. The result will never change. It's like DJ Octavio. That's so cute. Hey, the plot's empty. Did Order do this? Look, I think I see the color trips traps inside the port- What portals? What portals? Where are the portals? What are you talking about? Oh uh, yeah, we're turning up the intensity on this fight. And it's encore time. Ready to take a bore? Wait, ready to take what? Boar? Is it- you mean in here? <laughs> yes! My color chips! Oh, and my movement chips! Ah, oh, that's all I need. Oh, my movement speed! Woo! -woo! <gasps> Look at me go! I'm Newman! I'm Newman! Nobody can catch me! I am Newman! Oh my god! Do do do! Do 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 do
Look at all these drops! Look at all these drops! Running, an undefined error is occurring. Running, running, an undefined error is occurring. <sighs> did we win? Yeah, we did. What the? What's that? It's so cute. You won you ruined everything. <laughs> I was so cool. It's like order, except a lot less scary. I don't think we have much to worry about here. It's so cute. <laughs> Sweet case, Colson. Yo, baby puss. You were down with our music, right? We can catch. We can catch a VIP so show. Oh, pearl. Oh, pearl. <laughs> It's so cute! Alright, time for us to bounce. We gotta get back on tour. Dude, the late motifs. <gasps> that was really fast. Splatoon 3 Expansion Pass. Oh, I can't believe it's already over. You know what's funny? My main, my first, like, main weapon I ever use was back in Splatoon 1, and it was the Octobrush, mainly because I couldn't aim. So that was like the first weapon that I consistently used. And it feels like we came back in a big circle with me clearing first with the Octobrush. Ah. Oh. That was such a beautiful game. It was a lot shorter than I hoped for, but it was packed with a lot of good content. I can definitely see myself replaying it. In fact, I probably will be replaying it a couple more times because I'm a sucker for lore and there's like at least 20 lockers I haven't unlocked yet. So I will be grinding it, I think, but... This was like... This is not what I expected from uh, Splatoon DLC because I was expecting something like the second game's DLC with like a lot more thicker storyline. This is not that thick of a storyline. It was basically just, you know, Marina makes VR, VR gets corrupted, you go and fight the bug with music and win. And th that's basically the whole story of this game minus the lore aspects. I really want to know what's going on with all the creepy sounds and... We didn't see Agent 4 in here. Is there like a post game to the DLC? I did kind of want to see what uh, the world would look like when it was a uh, grayscale. I guess we could just go into the settings and do that. It's not that hard. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, shooting star. Wow, it's like we went upwards, but it feels like we're in the sea now. Oh, such a beautiful game. Maybe I got a will carry the way back there, but it isn't over yet. They still want their color, so a world of order, and I'm gonna give it to them. Got the order replica gear. I got an emo. <laughs> oh, it's me! <gasps> wait, wait. Oh my god, wait, we Yo H Hello? Why are you guys here? They asked the same question too. Then I got a basic introduction to Incopolis Square. And I was also told that there were still a, f a few mindless souls walking about, so I guess I need to go back to save them. What the heck? Dude, I was playing this game like two days ago and I'm already like nostalgic for this place. I walked around the city and here's a few cool things I found. <gasps> He's out of the subway! He's out of the subway! You came back up! <gasps> oh no, the, su the subway! Let me go in the freaking subway! Oh, you're you freaking fish! Oh my god. That's so wild. I can't believe we're playing. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> oh? Oh no, he's not here, but they're selling crepes now. Can I buy crepes? Can I buy anything from you? No, get out of here, Haru. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, this is so exciting. I'm so excited. Ah! After running around in the city, I returned back to Memvers where Pearl and Marina greeted me. Though order is no longer a threat, the spire still stands and there are still souls trapped inside as palettes. So there still seems to be post-game content after this with lockers and Marina's diaries still yet to be found. But that is a wrap on the main game of the DLC. It was a really fun game, though a little frustrating at times, but I highly recommend it to anyone who likes Splatoon. And if this was your first time getting involved with any type of Splatoon content, thank you for sticking along with me. Remember to subscribe if you enjoyed my content, and if you would like to join me on my next journey. This was Nyan, thanks for watching.